My next guest founded and plays drums for one of the leading bands in the world. The first film he wrote and directed, So What?, at its world premiere in New York City last night. And starting this Saturday, Showtime will be airing The Police, The Synchronicity Concert. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stuart Copeland. Stuart. Stuart Allen, nice to see you. Come on over here. Nice to see you. Oh, shucks. Uh, when you founded the band, uh, did you have any notion at all that you would, uh, in a very short period of time, become uh, considered to be the number one uh, rock and roll band in the world? Well, it wasn't that short a time, as a matter of fact. It was about seven years. And it seems like an overnight success to a lot of people, but in fact, it was a long, um, it was a long climb. Yeah. But we were optimistic. When you first started touring, in fact, when you uh, first started touring not only this country, but the world, it was pretty much self-contained, wasn't it? Just you guys in a rented truck and you'd show up anywhere and, and do a show? That's right. There was just three of us and our tour manager. Well, we had three ro we had four roadies. Sting, Andy, me, and Kim <laughs> Turner. Yeah. We weren't very good as roadies, though. Uh, there was also, I was reading this afternoon, one show in the Northeast, uh, help me with this, where maybe it's just a bar and like a very small crowd turned out. Does that ring a bell? There were so many, you know, there's lots where just small crowds turned out. Yeah. Now, when, when you would, would show up and there would be a tiny crowd, would you say, well, forget this, let's move well, on? Well, there was one gig in Poughkeepsie, which we'll, we all will remember. Or was it Millimantic? Who knows? Anyhow, it was the night of the big game, the big football game. And so nobody came to the show. Yeah, the that's people, bad scheduling. Yeah, the, yeah. Few, the few people who were at the show were watching the game. In fact, we were watching the game. <laughs> in fact, we all watched the game until the game was over. And then, you know, by that time, we'd got talking to the five or six people who were in there. <laughs> and, um, and so then they went to their tables in front of the stage. And we ran around the back way onto the stage and mm -hmm. then came on and played our show, by which time we already had shared a few gags with everybody, yeah. you know. This would have been a memorable show for that, uh, that yeah. five people, those five people. Tell me about uh, So What? The movie premiered last night? That's right. Well, I missed my own premiere. I was at a police Again, show. bad scheduling, it's see? It's terrible. There it was, my world premiere, my baby, this film. Um, it's about punks, which is a very um, strange subject. I, you know, like punks happened seven years ago as well. But they're still there in England, fizzling and popping, you know. In fact, there's more of them. Uh, the fashions, the music fashions and so on, have moved on ten generations down the line. All the thinkers and the Johnny Rottens and everything have all moved on. Mm -hmm. But they're still there, out in the wilds of uh, urban Britain. They're still there, still unemployed, and they will never be employed. So they've, you know, they've dyed their hair pink and they've, they've got got on a uniform which disqualifies them from participating yeah. in society. How much time did you spend with these people? I spent about a month, I suppose. Me and a little, um, it was about a five-man crew. Did they, uh, did you have an instant rapport with them, or were they suspicious of you, Mr. A multi-billionaire rock star? Well, <laughs> I did wonder about that, as a matter of fact. I, I wondered how they would respond to me being there. So the five-man crew, four of them in front and me behind. You know? <laughs> but actually, they turned out to be marshmallows. You know, the, the hostile attire, you know, all that, the leather and the change and the studs and the safety pins, is to ensure that no way will anyone hire them. You know, they go down every Thursday and get their welfare check. And, you know, like they have this terrible fear that one day the, the officer will say, ah, oh, we have a job for yeah. you. And they go, oh, no. So they go and put on some more peroxide onto their hair and put in some more, you know. Yeah. And, to, you know, because they don't want it. They don't, they don't want to blow the gig, yeah, no. Right, they'll be taking a job away from somebody who needs it. The, uh, the movie is called So What? And uh, we're going to look at a bit of it now. Is there any explanation that we need here? Or have we pretty much, uh, you explained it for us? They're pretty self-explanatory, I think. All right, and uh, this will be, is it playing all over the country, released in uh, regional areas? Well, this is amazing. The, this show, is the promotion's going all over the country, but actually right now it's just playing at the 8th, can I plug it? Sure, please do. Okay. It's playing at the 8th Street Playhouse. The 8th Street Playhouse. Yeah. All right. Well, the, in New York. That's in New York City. So it's, yeah. very, it's very colorful, and uh, you want to see more of this. Now, was your impression that, that when these sure. guys... Oh, yeah, no. When these guys are 45, are they still going to be... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to these guys when they're 45. Maybe maybe they'll turn into pumpkins or something. I, <laughs> what happened to all the hippies? You know, I guess you know something happened to them, so yeah. something will happen to the punks yeah. too. Or probably not though, because unemployment's so bad. You know, maybe they never will fit in. You mentioned uh, earlier about it took you seven years from the inception of the group to to the success that you've enjoyed in the yeah. last uh, three or four years or so. Uh, is this going to be the last uh, the, uh, formal tour? The, people are talking about the dun, band is dun, dun, yeah dun. is coming apart, breaking up, taking a break. What are you going to do? 
No, we're, um, we're just taking a long break. And we did this last year, as a matter of fact. We took a long break, and everyone said the band's breaking up and everything. Mm -hmm. But two weeks later, you know, I get a call from Andy, and Andy gets a, you know, Sting gets a call from me, and, you know, and we're, back, we're back in the shop, you know. Yeah. And this will probably happen this time, you know. In fact, it's already started. We, we intended a year off. We're not going to see each other. But already we're starting to think, well, what about, you know, the live album? And, uh, you know, and there's actually, we're going to be back seeing each other again. So it's know. sort of an unofficial vacation or hiatus. Yeah. Now, do you guys get along all right? Or is this a little, is some friction here and there? Or? Well, right now we get along very well, you know. Right now you get along well. Right now, that's true. It varies. Uh -huh. But uh, morale is very good right now. In the periods when you're not getting along, what would be an issue that would cause you not to get along? You know... I come down at breakfast, <laughs> and you know, like Sting's got two fried eggs, and I got one. Uh -huh. This is the kind of issue that can split apart, you know, the greatest thing in rock yep. and roll, you know. Yep. Because the point is that you know, when you're when you're when you're the goose that lays the golden eggs, and everybody you know opens doors for you, you know, takes care of you. Are you happy, Mr. Copeland? And everything, you start to feel like you know, like all these little things. Well, no, I'm not happy, as a matter of fact, you know, <laughs> because of some stupid little thing, you know. Yeah. And um, and so basically, it's all part of just you know, not growing up when you're in a group. Sure. People so, don't realize when you're on stage performing that you had to undergo the pressure that day of somebody else ordering two fried eggs. That's right. Somebody, you know, like hotel managers That's right. were fired, you know. That's right. This is not an easy life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, anyway, I, I hope that you don't break up. I hope you get some time off uh, and uh, hope you, that you can come back around again the next time you tour this country. And uh, congratulations on all the wonderful success of the band. Well, Mr. Stuart Copeland, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck with the movie also. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Uh, come on back.